Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. Today we're going to be examining congruent triangles, and not just that, but we're going to be examining congruent uh, shapes as well. So not just triangles, but quadrilaterals, etc. A couple of things to keep in mind. A shape is only congruent if it has the same size in shape. So, so if we have a triangle, all of the angles need to be congruent to one another. All right, all the angles need to be congruent to one another. All the sides need to be congruent to one another and in the same order, the same position. Same thing with polygons. Two polygons are congruent if their corresponding angles and sides are all congruent. In other words, both of these shapes need to be the exact same shape and same size. They might be flipped versions of each other. They might be rotated versions of each other. But as long as they're the same shape, same size, that's what we're looking for. So we look at this triangle for example. All right, we have triangle ABC and triangle DEF. All right, I'm going to zoom in just slightly here. Triangle ABC and triangle DEF. Now, if we want to identify some corresponding angles, corresponding sides, I see that A has a single notch and D has a single notch, right? A and D has a single notch. So I'm going to say angle A angle A is congruent, squiggle sign with an equals, to angle D. All right, angle A and angle D we'd say are congruent to one another. Same thing here, it looks like B and E both have two notch and two notches going. So I would say that side B is congruent to side E. And lastly, looks like C has three notches, F has three notches on the angle. So we'd say that C and F are both congruent to one another. Now, that's not the only thing we need. If we have congruent angles, one triangle might be bigger than the other. We need to look at the sides as well. It looks like between A and B, there's a single red notch on the side, right? In D and E, there's a single red notch on the side. So I'd say that AB is congruent to DE. These sides are all congruent. Side AB and side DE are congruent to one another. And we could say this as well for um, each of the other combinations. Like we have a two notch and a two notch between BC and EF. So I could say BC and EF are going to be congruent to one another. And then what do we have left? Three notches, AC and DF. AC and TF are also going to be congruent to one another. There's something I want you to notice about the way this statement was written. We have this statement that says triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. The order of the letters are very important here. Notice that A and D go together, right? A is the first letter and D is the first letter. Notice that they're also the single notch letters. A and D went together up here. Same thing. B is the second letter. E is the second letter. That means that B corresponds with E specifically. And then C and F, C and F go together. The sides are also important. Notice that, for example, B, C was the second and third letter. EF is the second and third letter. So BC is, cor is congruent to EF. It corresponds and is congruent because they're the second and the third letter. First and third letter, we've got AC corresponding with DF. AC and DF are going to correspond together as well. All right, so order of the lettering is extremely important here. This is one that I think you can probably do on your own. Um, I'm just going to do a couple examples of this real quick. So if we have triangle PQR is congruent to triangle STW. All right. Notice that P is the first letter. All right. So I could say that angle P, think about it, angle P is congruent to which angle? Angle S. Angle S is also the first letter. Yeah. Angle S is also the first letter, so we'd say that P is congruent to S. 
Same thing, Q could be congruent to T, R could be congruent to W, etc. If I want to talk about sides, PQ is going to be congruent to side ST for the exact same reasons. Squiggles and equals PQ and ST are going to be congruent to one another because they're the first and second letter, first and second letter. You could also say things like SW. Suppose you had S and W. What would that be congruent to? Think about that for a moment. First letter, third letter, SW. Yep, it'd be congruent to P and R. You could write SW and P and R. So let's look at this next example. We're given that ABC, triangle ABC, is congruent to triangle DBC. All right. I'm going to start by marking down the angles that I know are congruent. I see that A is congruent to D. All right. A right on this side is congruent to D on this side. I see B is congruent to itself, B. Notice that there are two different Bs here, two angle Bs. One is going ABC, so ABC this left side, and one is going D, B, C, the right side. They're both congruent. Since we know this is 90, we know the other one is also 90 degrees. All right. Since we know that this one's 49.3, we know that this one is also 49.3. All right. So if we want to do a couple things, we want to find the value of X. For example, find the value of X. Well, I could solve this equation down. I'm going to do that below here and switch over to blue. 2x minus 16 is equal to a 90. I could add 16 to both sides, so that's going to leave us with a 2x is equal to 106. Again, I added 90 to both, or 16 to both sides. Divide both sides by 2, divide both sides by 2. We're going to get an x as a grand total of a 53. Grand total of 53. Now for our second one, we want to find DBC. Let's mark that in red. Measure of angle DBC, D over to B over to C, which is this angle I'm going to mark with a couple of notches. I don't know how big it is yet, but think third or um, the uh, angle theorems from last section. We know that all angles add up to 180 in a triangle. We already have a 90, we already have 49.3, so I can do 180 minus the 90 minus the 49.3. Subtract those all out, 180 minus 90 is a 90, 90 minus 49.3 is going to be a 51.7. 41.7, excuse me, a 41.7 for that angle, so we know that that, that angle is a 41.7 degrees. Last one up. Now, we know that two triangles are congruent. Take a moment to look at the diagrams. We have triangle DEF. This triangle over here is congruent to LMN. This triangle over here. Let's mark off a few congruent pieces. D is congruent to L. D over here is congruent to L. I'll mark those in red. Mark those next ones in blue. E is congruent to M, because they're the second letters, E and M. Now mark this last one in green. F is congruent to N, the third letters. All right, we could also say some things about the sides. I suppose this side is congruent to that side. Um, this side is congruent to this side and one, two, three notches is congruent to one, two, three notches here. All right, so I want to know how big angle L is. Now here's a catch. Angle L is labeled, but angle D is not. L is labeled, D is not. L has some X's in it, X plus 15. I need to know how big X is. What can I do? Well, let's spot the other things that have X's. I see this has an X in its corresponding side, which is also congruent to it, is the same thing. So we could go ahead and write down 2x plus 3 equals 53. All right. 
and doing some simple algebra here, 2x is equal to a 50 after subtracting, so x would have to be a 25. If you have 50 cents divided by 2, you've got a quarter. We've got 25, not degrees, excuse me. Once we know that 25, though, we can go ahead and plug that in right there. 25 plus a 15 gives us a 40, so we know that angle L is equal to a 40 degrees. Now we can also do the same thing for Y. I want to find side EF. I'm going to switch over maybe to, now what other colors do I have? Pink. Perfect. Pink. I have a 1.5Y plus a 1.3, but it's corresponding congruent side. We don't have any information. There's nothing I can solve there. It has a Y in it. I see that there's a Y over here, a 5Y that corresponds to the 120, right? 5y equals 120. If we divide both sides by 5, that's going to give us a 20, what is that? 120 over 5, putting on the spot, is that an 18? I don't have a calculator on me, let's check it out. 18 times a 5, how many times 5 goes into 18, or 5 times 18 is 0. Uh, it's a 40, so I put it up a 4, 5 times 1, nope, that's 5 times 18 is a 90, that doesn't work. Let's try a, no, it's got to be 24. It's got to be 24. It's a Saturday morning here, my, my math is not quite up to snuff this morning. 5 times 4 is a 20, put a 0 down here, carry a 2. 5 times a 2 is a 10, plus a 2 is a 12, 120, okay, yep. Yep, so Y would have to be a 24. Oh dear, this will be a fun decimal. Now we can long divide that, that's fine. We have 1.5 times the 24 plus the 1.3. Yeah, let's go ahead and long multiply this. That is going to be totally fine. We have a 1.5 multiplied by a 24. We're going to ignore the decimal point for a moment. 4 times 5 is a 20. 0 carry the 2. 4 times 1 is a 4. Plus 2 is a 6. Um, bring down a 0. 2 times a 5 is a 0. Carry the 1. 2 times 1 is 2. Carry that. That's a 3. Add straight down. We have a 0. We have a 6. We have a 3 because we had a single decimal place. Decimal point goes down here. That's going to be a 36. 1.5 times a 24 is a 36. I suppose we could have known that because half of 24 is 12. Add that on to 24 gives us 36. If we want to go ahead and take that number, add 1.3 to it as well. Add a 1.3 to it as well. That's going to give us a grand total of 37.3. 37.3. We know that EF is 37.3. As usual, if you have any questions on today's topics, please email me, let me know. Uh, your assignment for tonight, I believe, is from the book. Please check Moodle, and have a great day.